Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Lazy Programmer Show. In this video, we are going to answer the question, what is the probability that Elon Musk has COVID-19? As you may have heard, Elon Musk recently took four rapid tests for COVID-19, two of which came back positive and two of which came back negative. Now, you may assume that this means he has a 50% chance of having the virus. In this video, I will show you why that is incorrect. If you're a student of my machine learning courses, then you will recognize several important concepts from my courses being applied here. Number one, the idea of sensitivity and specificity. That is, when it comes to the accuracy of a test, we don't just have one number, we characterize it with two numbers. Number two, Bayes' rule. This is a crucial component of Bayesian machine learning and maximum a posteriori estimation, which is used in many machine learning models. And number three, the idea that your posterior becomes your prior as you collect more data. This allows some Bayesian machine learning models to be online learners. Before we get started, just a very brief reminder that currently two of my VIP courses are currently on sale using special VIP coupons. My latest course, Financial Engineering and Artificial Intelligence in Python, will teach you important concepts such as how to model stock returns, time series analysis, portfolio optimization, the capital asset pricing model, algorithmic trading, and Q learning. My latest deep learning course on PyTorch covers everything from the ground up, from basic linear models to ANNs, CNNs, and RNNs, along with NLP, computer vision, transfer learning, GANs, recommender systems, facial recognition, and deep reinforcement learning. Remember that the VIP versions of these courses contain exclusive content that you will not get if you do not get the VIP version of the course. The current VIP coupons expire in less than one month, so get your copy today. By clicking on the links in the description below, the VIP coupons will be automatically applied so you don't have to enter the coupon code yourself. Okay, so back to Elon Musk. First, let's think about what the relevant probabilities and random variables are. Let's suppose X is a Bernoulli random variable. It's equal to true if Elon Musk has COVID and false if not. Since we are programmers, we'll represent these with 1 and 0. Let's suppose T is Elon Musk's test result. So t equals 1 if the test comes back positive, and t equals 0 if the test comes back negative. In actuality, we'll have multiple t's, t1 up to t4, since there were four tests. Okay, so that's easy enough. We've just defined some variables. Next, let's think about what we are given and what we want to find. Obviously, we know the results of Elon Musk's test, which is the reason for this controversy in the first place. As per his Twitter account, the first test was positive, the next two were negative, and the fourth was positive. We also have some important data about the accuracy of the test. According to the webpage for the test, the test has a specificity of 99.5% and a sensitivity of 84%. So what do these numbers mean? In fact, they correspond to the likelihood probabilities in Bayes' rule. Specifically, the sensitivity is the probability that the test comes back positive given that the patient has the virus. We call this the true positive rate. Using our notation, this is p of t equals 1 given x equals 1. The specificity is the probability that the test comes back negative given that the patient does not have the virus. We call this the true negative rate. Using our notation, this is p of t equals 0 given x equals 0. As a side note, if you want references to this data, please check the links in the description below. Another quantity we are interested in is the prior. This is the probability that Elon Musk has COVID without any knowledge from any test. A reasonable assumption would be that this is equal to the overall prevalence of the virus amongst the population. Of course, this is not a number that we actually know and would be quite hard to estimate. We have numbers like the amount of new cases per day and the total population, but we also have to account for the fact that people recover and also that many asymptomatic people will not get tested. So one way you can think of this number is that it's a parameter to this problem and then you can check how the answer varies using different values. For the purpose of this discussion, we'll assume low prevalence, which on the test information page is listed as 0.6%. Okay, so p of x equals 1 is equal to 0.6%. So those are the givens. Now, what do we actually want to find? Well, we want to know whether or not Elon Musk has COVID given the test result. Using our notation, this is p of x given t. 
Okay, so I hope you can see how Bayes' rule comes into play. We are given P of T given X and P of X, which are the likelihood and prior respectively. We want to find P of X given T, which is called the posterior. Thanks to Bayes' rule, we know that this is equal to P of T given X times P of X divided by P of T. P of T is just equal to P of T and X summed over X, and this quantity can be rephrased in terms of P of T given X times P of X. Okay, so that's Bayes' rule. What makes this problem a little more complicated is that there are four tests. So in fact, we have T1 equals 1, T2 equals 0, T3 equals 0, and T4 equals 1. Our strategy for solving this problem will be this. First, we're going to calculate P of X given T1 equals 1 using Bayes' rule, as described on the previous slide. Next, we need to calculate P of X given T2 equals 0 and T1 equals 1. This looks complicated mathematically, but in practice, it's simple. What we do is, although P of X given T1 is the posterior from the first step, it becomes the prior in the second step. Thus, on the second step, all we need to do is apply Bayes' rule again using our new prior. On the third step, the posterior from step 2 becomes our new prior, and we get posterior number 3. And again, we apply Bayes' rule using this new prior. This will give us the probability that Elon Musk has COVID given the first three tests. Finally, on the fourth step, posterior number 3 becomes prior number 4, and we use that to get posterior number 4. Now I realize that this probably sounds very abstract, but once you see the calculations, it will make more sense. Okay, so let's calculate the first posterior. First, you'll recognize that the numerator is just the sensitivity, which is 84%, and the prior, which is 0.6%. On the denominator, we need to find the marginal probability that T1 equals 1. This means that we have to sum over all possible values of x, which means when x equals 1 and when x equals 0. For the case when x equals 1, recognize that this is just the same as the numerator. For the case when x equals 0, we have the probability that the test is positive given that Elon does not have the virus. In this case, we're not given this probability, but it can be calculated from the specificity. We know that the probability of the test being negative given that Elon does not have the virus is 99.5%. That's the probability of a true negative. Therefore, the probability that the test is positive, given that Elon does not have the virus, is just 1 minus 99.5%. In other words, it's the probability of a false positive. Similarly, the prior probability of not having the virus is just 1 minus 0.6%. As you can see, the result is 50%, which agrees with the result from the product's information page. This is actually a very interesting conclusion. It means that if the prevalence of the virus is low and your test comes back positive, the probability that you actually have the virus is only 50%. Okay, so now we have step number two, which is to calculate the posterior given the first two tests. Recognize that the posterior from step number one now becomes the prior in this step. For simplicity's sake, we're going to omit T1 from this calculation and just call it P subscript one of X. As you can see, now this is just a matter of applying Bayes' rule again. The major difference in this step is that the test result T2 is equal to zero because the second test came back negative. So on the numerator, we have P of T equals zero given X equals one. That is the probability of a false negative. Since the probability of a true positive is 84%, this value is one minus 84%. As an exercise, I'll let you figure out the rest of the probabilities you should confirm that the result of this calculation is 14%. Therefore, after two tests, one of which was positive and one of which was negative, the probability that you have the virus is now only 14%. Okay, so I'm not going to show you step three and step four, since they are basically the same as steps one and two, using the posterior from the previous step as the prior in the next step. You're encouraged to write a computer program to calculate these values in order to verify that you arrive at the same answer. After the third test, your posterior should be 2.6%, and after the fourth test, your posterior should be 81.5%. This makes sense, since after two negative tests and one positive test, you would expect the probability to fall. If two out of three tests are negative, the probability that you have the virus is very low. 
However, note that the final result is counterintuitive. Despite the fact that you have an equal number of positive and negative tests, the probability that you have the virus is 81.5%. So this is an interesting lesson in model accuracy. Typically, one would assume that a sensitivity of 84% and a specificity of 99.5% is pretty high. Building a classifier with an accuracy at least in the 80s can be considered decent depending on what data you're working with. And yet, even with such high accuracy, we can see that, after each test, the posterior probability changes by a very large amount. From the third test to the fourth test, we go from very confident that Elon does not have the virus to very confident that he does.